Hello and welcome to this series of Data Protector demo videos. In today's episode, I want to show you a round trip through the web GUI for data protector management. So first of all, we have to log in into the system and depending on what your setup is, you may have to enter different usernames here. Data Protector supports local users, um, which are just like internal to Data Protector to also disconnect from LDAP or other systems. If you have set up multi-factor authentication, Data Protector would ask for the six-digit uh, one-time uh, password code to be entered. Now, at the end of the day, you end up on the dashboard first, which gives you the grand total overview. And uh, in case you wanna try this yourself, this is the address that you need to check to. Obviously, you switch the, the name to, to your own personal cell manager configuration, port 7116. Now, the dashboard gives you uh, information about various areas of uh, your backup. So first of all, and that's the middle section is like the data protector demo session that ran in the last 24 hours. And if there were any alerts or any issues found, which an administrator or operator would take care of, uh, like like first, you see local workloads uh, being being protected on the right hand side. You see cloud workloads being protected, and that will be Microsoft 365, some some other cloud native applications, and certain hypervisors being protected. If you have turned on anomaly detection, on the bottom right hand side, you will see an overview of uh, po potential anomalies that have been found. And with that menu, you can actually check on it and either mark them as an anomaly or, or not an anomaly. And you may want to check for, for individual and additional information on it. So this way, an administrator or operator can check on the um, behavior of this anomaly and mark it appropriately. The dashboard will also show you the clients which are installed. Uh, not only can you see if they are on the most current version, uh, you also have a capability to assign tags to them and therefore make life a little bit easier on searching throughout a very large environment. So you can search for host names for platforms, installed components, or those tags, which means that administrators can create their own view of a, a certain portion of a data protector cell making their lives easier to, to look at certain locations or certain types of clients and check if everything is okay for that environment. You also have information about the uh, total capacity being protected. That's kind of giving you an overview of where your data is and where the most important data is, even though it also gives you kind of a breakdown on uh, individual data types and it gives you whatever Windows applications and other applications, which is mainly Linux and, and all the um, bigger system Unixes that are around. So uh, we just also added a documentum to this because with the latest version of Data Protector 24.1, it supports documentum now. And we also show many other applications being, uh, being protected. On the upper right-hand side, you will find your device setups and the types and capacity that they're supporting right now. Again, you can select and filter by type or subtypes or by host. This is extremely important for very large customer installations, especially where uh, devices are distributed over many locations. Now, from the drop-down window on the left-hand side, uh, we've just seen the dashboard view and all its ingredients. In the session overview, you can actually check on certain time frames and uh, see whether or not uh, information is okay. Uh, we have a number of uh, kind of entries here which may concern an administrator and check for any more ingredients, like why did it fail? Like in this particular example, we seem to have the disk agent not completing successfully. And again, an administrator may look at that and check for things to get back in order. So sessions, like you just seen, lets you directly click to the individual information. Um, you can sort by any of those columns over here and on the left-hand side, you can also kind of limit information to whatever failures running completed. 
you can also filter by session types and so on. So this makes life a lot easier for overall backup management. Also very important is uh, administration. This is where you specify roles, groups, and users. So the typical RBAC management, for example, if we look at roles or groups, uh, this is where you specify which of your administrators or users can actually use certain systems. And this can be limited by uh, adding them or removing them from those groups and roles. The user overview gives you the mixture of local users and LDAP users. So this is where general management happens. This is also the place where you can select and turn on or turn off on uh, multi-factor authentication. There's also a capability of turning on multi-factor authentication for the complete system, and that is for everybody at that point in time. So you have individual and, and kind of system-wide uh, configurations here. Administration also allows you for creating and assigning those tags. So this is where you uh, kind of create client tags, which may have a certain meaning for you. So this could be a location, it could be a tenant name, it could be a subsidiary or whatever, any, any other tagging you may think of and that you want to make use later on to filter for and to search for. So this is where you do that. You have anomaly detection. We've already seen that in uh, the configuration uh, view. This is basically where you turn it on or off. So you can do that anytime. And the turning it on will actually kick off a machine learning capability, learning from the system, and then being trained on the current behavior. And from this moment on, every backup coming in will actually add to the overall learning curve of the anomaly detection machine learning approach. You also have some security settings, which is basically where you set multi-factor authentication on a system-wide kind of basis. So this will completely turn it on for everybody. And that may be the option you wanna choose if you wanna have a, a super secure environment. Another area that is pretty important is reporting because uh, on top of anomaly detection, reporting gives you not only the general status of your backups, it will also tell you uh, if any things kind of work above or below the norm. And it may also give you indication on what the, the health check of your system is. So there are various kind of options available from here, showing you overall client information, like in a tabular kind of view. You can drill down by client, by a certain configuration type, and you have certain items that you can pick from. It gives you, for instance, uh, information about media utilization. It also takes into account that you have backups coming in and other backups phasing out in terms of retention. And uh, it gives you a nice overview of what your storage consumption is or your media consumption is at that very moment. Again, you can have like a time frames uh, configured and uh, certain devices or clients or types being specified as search patterns. It also gives you like, like scheduling overview and uh, many more items. So just wanted to pick one or two more, uh, which are pretty important like RPO which is basically where you set your SLAs for your backup environment. So let's say you want to check if RPO and RTO, meaning recovery point objective and recovery time objective, is okay. So what you would want to do is more or less like search for a client or a certain system. And by having specified certain SLAs, this particular report gives you a status met or a status breached report which is basically you set up a certain recovery time or recovery point and you give it certain minimum and maximum values. So if your backups are out of those kind of frames, then it will actually report a kind of status uh, breach at that very moment. So again, administrators can now look at this particular backup specification to see like, are we providing backups often enough or fast enough? so that they can influence this particular behavior and then run this report again to check if the changes actually turned out good or bad. You also have some advanced reports, which is more or less like providing you with uh, chargeback information or a deduplication rate prediction. With, it's also like pretty important because it also gives you 
kind of a view into the future. So this is basically like the, the dark blue kind of curve here is the uh, past history of a, a certain configuration. And when it moves into the light blue dotted line over here on the right hand side, this is actually the future prediction of your deduplication uh, behavior. So this, again, gives you more information on planning, on uh, making sure that your devices are um, used and occupied into the right level, and it helps you planning for storage systems. Uh, you may also want to learn about session success rate and to see if there is any client which is below the norm. So that's basically where administrators look into quite regularly, making sure that systems are in good health. So you may even want to find out what the most unreliable client is in your environment. And if there is a client or let's say a few clients suddenly showing unreliable kind of behavior, that may also be an indication of an anomaly or maybe even a, a malware attack. Now you also have the scheduler over here, which is basically making sure that things run at the right, um, the right time or into the right place. This is basically taking away the backup specifications and scheduling them to a certain time frame. It offers you uh, many ways of configuration. So let's say uh, you want to you want to look up a certain backup specification. So let's take Documentum for that moment, and I have a backup specification created here. It lets you kind of select the backup types and and certain uh, data protection overrides um, that that are more or less like for special occasion. Moving into next, it lets you select the days uh, on when you want to create those backups. So whatever, every weekday or a particular day on a week, you can also configure monthly, yearly, uh, and kind of stacked uh, schedules in, if you want. And from here, you have certain selections of, of a certain day of a month or of a week uh, and, and certain time frames and time zones. So you have a, a lot of configuration items available here. You can clone a schedule if you have to do many of them for different occasions. Uh, so you save a couple of steps at the beginning and things become uh, very easy to use. So what we also did, uh, we, we added a number of restore activities over here. Uh, you can restore certain applications, uh, virtualization like VMware, uh, Sapana or Documentum. So let's take, for instance, Sapana. The way the workflow works here is like you uh, select the system that you want to restore. You select the, the instance that is to be restored, and you may have a certain tenant DB that, that is gone bad and you want to restore. Um, on the next page, you can actually select where to restore to. And obviously, you can redirect your restores to a different client. So that is what you have available in that dropdown over here. You will have to provide certain usernames and, and user groups. So this is depending on which of the applications you restore. You may also want to check for certain instances to be restored. And you may want to give it a certain uh, target database, which is to be to be set here. The point is, uh, you can restore to different clients, like said. Uh, you can give it different names, like for QA purposes. You may even want to do some sandbox restores where you check your data before you put it back into production. So that's kind of what you do here. You may have to add some additional settings. So that depends on the target system that you want to restore to. So you do that in, in those systems. And then obviously you want to uh, select whatever type of restore you want to have, like, like a certain session or point in time restore. Let's go for session for the moment. And then uh, it offers you whatever session it has done. So let's pick this one. Otherwise, you can also use the calendar to limit the, uh, the, the, the results that you see on, on the right hand side. And once you have selected the session, you go next again. From here, you can select devices. Uh, if you want to use a different device than the, the standard or automatic one, you just click the right hand side and then you browse for the devices that you have available. So that's basically giving you the opportunity to override the, uh, the existing configuration because you may have copied your data to different devices like in a 32110 strategy approach or any other copy that you have manually made for, for certain reasons. So this is, to, this is what you can pick from here. So I leave it to automatic. 
And on the next page, it would even show you the media that is kind of appropriate for that. So this may be a longer list of pieces of media, depending on um, how much data is to be restored and where it was stored at that very moment. So this is what you have here. And the last page actually gives you a summary and then you hit the restore button and then uh, restore workflow will kick off. So that's basically what you have from that restore page. Now, from this particular dashboard overview, uh, like we've seen, uh, you have a, a number of items on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, you have certain settings and, and configurations. Um, so first of all, there is user federation, which gives you access to either a certain Microsoft LDAP or Active Directory, Open LDAP or eDirectory. So that's the three major types that we support today. Like I said, for a very secure environment, you may want to go for local users, which are not connected to any LDAP uh, of any type, because an LDAP system could have been compromised as well. So some customers prefer local users as well. You have a place to manage uh, certificates uh, to connect to external system. You can fine tune the scheduler from here, either by uh, creating certain uh, maintenance times and the, um, the options of turning on and off for a certain element. And you have uh, a lock page, which gives you easy access to everything that happens uh, while you're talking to the GUI. And you may want to check for certain background information. So this is basically where you see this coming up. So this concludes uh, today's demo. Uh, I hope you find it useful. Thanks for watching and goodbye.